zero point one now, zero moles. Now, don't be enticed by the sneakiness of that. You still have to look at the mole ratios. Do not go, oh, same volume, same concentration must be all one to one to one to one. It's not. We must look at the mole ratios. Be careful. So B, C, A. A. Before, right. change, and after. Now, we're going to do M times V equals moles. So 50 times 0.1 is simply 5 millimoles. And this is also 5 millimoles. You might say, well, we have exactly the same amount of each. And that is somewhat true, but it is true. But the problem is, is, is well, what is the issue, Mr. They Sanders? react in different ratios. Because we have a 3 here and a 2 here. Which one will you, will you run out of first? Uh, let's see. We're going to use up the one with the greater coefficient first. So the limiting reactant in this case is the second chemical, or the cap or chloride. So how much of this are we going to have go away? Uh, that's going to all go away, since that's our limiting reactant. So that'll be minus 5.0. And that in, uh, A, what's A stand for? After. Again? After, dot. OK. <laughs> Mr. Bergman is so used to his ICE thing. And, and it's Friday much. afternoon to top it off. And it's also you before a holiday weekend, oh. so we are tired. Why are we here? Oh, wait, that's right, we have to get these done. And I was up at 4 this morning <laughs> to swim. So, Ugh. yeah, one of those things. Actually, I got some now. Well, it's been a long day. Okay, <laughs> so now we have to figure out how much this goes away. This is a little tricky because of this 3 to 2 mm. ratio. Let me just set it up for you. I think it's better to understand yeah, it dimensionally. Definitely. So if you have 5 millimoles of the CuCl2 over 1, then what you'll do is you can say there are 3 millimoles of CuCl2 to 2 moles of Na3, that says Na3, PO4. Now, Mr. Sams, where did I get that 2 and that 3? Those are the coefficients from the balanced equation. That's our mole ratio. And so you simply just convert from moles to moles or millimoles to millimoles, and you get 3.33. So this will be minus 3.33. So 5 minus 1.67, did I do that right, Mr. Yep. Sams? Yep, yes you did. 1.67 millimoles. Millimoles. Now, um, the sodium, oh, we didn't say this, did no, we? No, let's go ahead and The sodium chloride this. is a knackle, so this is aqueous, or is, it is a uh, soluble compound, mm -hmm. knackle. But this right here will be my precipitate. That is. Okay, so this starts at zero. This starts at zero. And this will be plus, now we have a one here. Mm -hmm. So when we compare it to a one-third, essentially, if you kind of figure this out, instead of multiplying it by two-thirds, you're going to multiply the five times one-third. Um, hopefully you see that. I'm not going to work that out. That's 1.67 or a 1.67. So this is kind of our basis to solve the problem. Now we're going to try and find the grams of the precipitate. And the grams of the precipitate, of course, is the copper 2 phosphate. And we have 1.67 millimoles of copper 2 phosphate. So if I have 1.6, this is part B, 1.67 millimoles of the Cu3, PO42, I then need to calculate the molar mass of Cu3PO42. So that'll be 3 times 60. 63.5. That's the copper right there. Plus uh, 31 times 2. That's the phosphorus. How many oxygens are there in that problem? Total of 8. 8 that's times 16. That's yeah. the oxygen. That adds to a pretty hefty number, 380.5 grams Guys, per Guys, double mole. check that and make sure Mr. Sams did it right. I'm pretty sure that's correct. 380. That's what we're going to go with. 0.5 grams in one mole. That's of the copper phosphate. I won't write the copper phosphate. But you get a grand hefty total of 635, probably three digits, yeah, uh, six, uh, milligrams of the Cu3 PO4 2. So that's the grams of the precipitate. Now we want to find the concentrations of all the ions, as it says, or you could say all of the species. So I will then go back to my previous screen and let's chat about um, the chemicals. Let's actually start with the copper. I think that's the easiest, the copper chloride right here. Now, which one was used up, the copper the or the chloride? The copper got used up because the chloride is still dissolved. And there are t a double there. So let's do the copper chloride. So with the copper chloride, all right, the concentration, so you have copper chloride, and we had 5 millimoles. So I'm going to say the concentration of the Cl negative will be equal to 2 times 5 over our total volume. I think our total volume would be 100. It was 100, yeah. 50 milliliters plus 50 milliliters. 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 That says milliliters. And that 2 times 5 is 10.1, isn't it? 0 0.10 molar. All right? So that's our chloride concentration. Now if we jump back to our screen again, 
So we've got the chloride taken care of. The copper is zero. We can maybe write that down. The concentration of the Cu2 positive is zero molar. It's all used up. And now we, of course, have the sodium and the phosphate to deal with. Now, the sodium has a little three there. So let me kind of bring this screen. We have um, five millimoles of Na3PO4. So the concentration of the ion Na positive one will be equal to five millimoles times three, due to this three right there, divided by 100 milli. It'd be 15, isn't it? Uh, point one. Yeah. Be 0 0.15 molar. Now, if I want to find the concentration of the phosphate, this one's a little bit tricky because, of course, some of it was used up in the making of our precipitate. So if we jump back to that screen, the phosphate, we had 1.67 moles. So I'm looking at the A column. So that's 1.67 millimoles divided by 100. I can do this in my head. Mm -hmm. Milliliters, and that'll be point zero one six seven molar. There it is. And that's the answer to question two. And these just are going to only, you're going to get good at these by like doing them. Mm -hmm. uh, doom, 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 until you're done doing them. Yeah, next. Now those were both double replacement reactions, That's forming correct. precipitates. So here's our acid base These reaction. Acid base but guys, reaction. this is not any different. It's the same exact, exact same process thing. It's with a different type of reaction. It does create a, a couple of issues which we're going to face as we deal with this. So of course I'm going to jump to a blank screen. So we're going to react sodium hydroxide. I, I love this hydroxide, <laughs> which of course is NaOH. Gonna roll that R. With acetic acid, H. C2H3O2. Now, it's also essentially a double replacement reaction, but it yeah. makes what? Uh, all acid base reactions make water. The H goes with the OH to make HOH. And the other chemical will be sodium acetate. Yes. Both sodium and acetate have a charge of positive one and negative one, or, or, you know, and then they, so they cancel. This is a balanced equation, so all of our things are one to one to one to one. So, what do I know about our 20 milliliters, 0.25 molar sodium hydroxide. And then it's titrated with 23.2 milliliters of acetic acid to the phenolphthalein endpoint. What is the concentration? Okay, this of the asks acid sort of a different know. question. We're not asking for concentration of no. reactants. We just want to find what is the concentration of the acetic acid. Mm -hmm. All right. So, but again, the thing I know things about is the sodium hydroxide. So I can do. This isn't a BCA table. No, folks. I would just use regular old stoichiometry rules to do this. Reason being, we're not given information about both the reactants. If we had full information about both, we would probably do the BCA. But if I have a molarity and volume of a particular chemical, I like to just do M times V equals moles. Perfect. So 25 or 0.25 times 20. Is that not five? It is five. So that is 5.0 millimoles of NaOH. NaOH. So actually, that's of NaOH. And guess what, folks? That is like my beginning of my stoichiometry. Yep. Now I want to convert to the acetic acid. And so I can say one millimoles. This is now th These coefficients, you're used to thinking of as mole to mole, but they can be millimole to millimole. Yep. They so can be molecule to molecule if you yeah, want. Yeah, that's true. One millimole yeah. of NaOH is one millimole, if I can write today, it's light of acetic acid, H-C2-H3O2. Now that's the moles of acetic acid. It turned out yeah. it was a one-to-one -one ratio. And I think, I'm going to think I'm going to do it this way, I think. And so that's, of course, five millimoles of acetic acid. Yep. Now we're trying to find the molarity, and probably should have said this earlier, but molarity is moles, moles. per liter. Or... Or millimoles, millimoles per, per milliliter. milliliter. Hey, look, we have millimoles. And guess what? We and also we have, have milliliters. So to find the concentration, we simply take the five and we divide it by 23.2.2 milliliters, and we get a grand concentration of 0 0.22 molar. Probably I could keep one more digit. Maybe 0 0.215 molar is the yeah. exact answer. Okay, that's that. Let's look at our next one. It's another acid-base yep. problem, but it's asking for something slightly different. All right, again, we have a balanced equation. Actually, that's the same thing. What's the concentration of the acid? Oh, it is, but it's got a different mul a different ratio. Different ratio, yeah. So that's we're why have I to have do it. Okay, so yep. we've got NaOH. Yep, NaOH and H3PO4. 
Oh, if you did the pro the Pepsi project with us, you have seen this you have reaction. seen this reaction. That makes H O H and N A three P O four. We're very familiar with this. With this this reaction. reaction, you are probably sick of balancing <laughs> it. You need a three here and a three here. Now, what do I know about this? Oh, we've got ten milliliters of 0.5 molar sodium hydroxide. And the phosphoric acid is uh, 23.2 milliliters. Hey, same volume again. I think I did the same problem. I made these up in my brain, so it's probably been ended. <laughs> so uh, M times V here, that is be five millimoles yep. of NaOH. You simply are going to, the only thing here that's going to be different, ladies and gentlemen, is instead Mole of a one to one ratio, ratio, then I'll say three millimoles of NaOH is equal to one millimole of H3PO4. When I do the math, or Mr. Sam's on my sidebar here, it's one point. Six seven, probably we can call that 1.7 millimoles. Yeah, for doing two sig two figs. Sig figs. So the concentration of the phosphoric acid will be 1.7 millimoles divided by 23.2 milliliters, and that's going to be a tiny number, 0 0.073 molar. So that's a pretty quick problem. So yep. these acid base ones, they usually ask for one thing instead of like 14 things like that other one. Mm -hmm. In this last acid base problem, it asks you to find a molar mass. Now, before we figure this out, we need to kind of define molar mass. What right. is molar mass again? Molar mass is grams divided by moles. So if you know the grams and you know the moles, you take the grams yep. and you divide. Most. Right. And hey, look in the problem. 0.523 grams of an unknown acid. We're just going to plug that right in. So we already know the grams. We already know half of the problem. So if we knew the moles. We just plug it in. And that we say, plug it in and that divide. So we do have a reaction. Uh, reactions. Unknown monoprotic right. what? acid. Mono? Mono means one. Mono means one. Yeah. Yes. So it means it's got one what? One proton one or one hydrogen ion. So that is, we're going to just call that H A. Ha. Because and we'll assume that A the has acid. a charge of negative one. Ha! Yes. Ha <laughs> ha! Plus, uh, what's it reacting? Oh, with? it is reacting with sodium hydroxide. Oh, the old sodium hydroxide. Mm. Have we seen that a couple of times? Couple times. Today? I think yeah. so. That makes HOH and NAA. Now, in this particular reaction, we have a one to one to one to one ratio. Convenient. Is that too many ones? I don't know. Whatever. Nah. Okay. So what do we know? We've got uh, 0.523 grams of our acid. And that's going to go in the top of our molar mass calculation. And for the base, we've got 22.5 milliliters. And its concentration is 0 0.103 molar. I see a molarity in a volume, Mr. Sam. I do, too. I'm going to say we're going to turn that into millimoles. So we just multiply MV. So M times V, so 0 0.103 times 22.5 gives me a grand... 2.32. We'll round it. 2.32 millimoles of NaOH. Mm -hmm. If I could convert that to millimoles, or actually to moles, yeah. I'm going to want to go to moles in this case. You'll see why. To moles of HA, now I'm going to use that mole to mole ratio. One millimole of NaOH is equal to one millimole. Where did I get those ones again? Uh, those are the coefficients of the balanced equation. Yeah, those, that's right here and here. And actually, on this case, guys, I'm going to go one more step because actually now I do want to convert to moles. Right. I'm going to then say 1,000 millimoles. millimoles is equal to one mole. Yep. And I get a number that is quite small. 0 0.00232. And that is the number of moles of HA. Now, we knew we had 0.523 grams of HA. So if I take... 0 0.532 grams of HA and divided by 0 0.00232 moles of HA. Grams divided by moles gives me a molar mass, molar mass, and it's 225 grams per mole. Weird. Big, that would be a big That's acid. Huge. Well, it would be like a Citrix and some of the bigger yeah. tartaric and stuff like that. It could happen. Well, guys, we have just one more problem in all of Chapter 4 left. Do, 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 do. This is a, another reaction stoichiometry problem. The only problem that's different here is this is a redox stoichiometry problem. This one's a bit more cumbersome because we have to spend time balancing the redox.